Lately, we've been doing a lot of projects with templates, and I have really grown to like templates. They really make things easier. Both the Mox and Vice that I did a few weeks ago and Jay's child size nesting chair that I did last week uh, only took me about an afternoon. And like the Mox and Vice, for example, I drew in the computer, I was able to print those templates out full size and cut them uh, or do them on the laser or CNC. And this is something that I get a lot of questions about. So I want to put together a video where I give you my favorite tips and tricks for template routing. Now this is the beginning of a router skill series we're gonna be doing over the next couple weeks, uh, culminating in a homemade shop router table that we're gonna make next week. So let's get into some of my favorite tips and tricks. So the most important part about template routing is attaching your template to your workpiece. And it is so important that this does not move during your routing application, otherwise your piece is gonna come out not the way you intend it. The way that I usually do it is with double stick tape. And now it's important that you find a double stick tape that you trust. I will link this one below, but this is the absolute Bugatti of double stick tape. And it's really cheap, it's like 14 bucks a roll, lasts forever easy to rip, and it's ultra thin. That's really important to me. There's a lot of really thick double stick carpet tapes out there, and that can allow the template to flex a little bit while you're using it. So really good double stick tape, or another way that I've seen people is using a pin nailer, which is, shoots a nail that has no head on it. And these are great, especially if you're using a dark colored wood or something, because these holes are so small, they don't show up. That's another way to do it. It's not my preferred method because I don't like to add holes to my workpiece if I don't need to. Let's talk about bits. When you're template routing, there's two types of bits. There's a top bearing or a bottom bearing. Uh, there's bits like these two that have both. These are the absolute best bit on the planet. I, I get these from Bits Bits. There's a 15% off discount down below. They put an Astra coating on these that you can see this one's way darker. So this one's uncoated, this one's coated, uh, and it makes the bit last twice as long, which is why I love going through them. Uh, these bits are very expensive, but I've had this one for three years and it's still as sharp as the day I got it. What's important about this, where your bearing is, is that grain direction matters. We're gonna get into that in a minute. Uh, there are straight bits as well that are much cheaper that you can get, but they're not going to be as easy to use, um, but they do get the job done. This is a upcut spiral bit with a top bearing. These are compression bits that the cutters go both ways, which really help eliminate tear out. And tear out is something you really have to worry about when template routing. So when I'm putting on double stick tape for template routing, I don't try and cover the whole piece because this stuff is so sticky that you can break your template when you're taking it off. So just be careful when you're removing it, especially if like these, these templates for shipping purposes, they come split with a dovetail. So you wanna make sure that you don't break that when you're removing the template. And there's two ways to cut out your workpiece. Now, it is really, really important when you're template routing to get as close to your line as possible. Now, I feel very comfortable with my bandsaw. So the way that I do it is I put my template on so that it has wood all the way around it, like so, and then I just, cut my piece out on the bandsaw, making sure not to hit my template. The other way to do it is just to hold it down and trace around it with pencil. And you know that your pencil is your absolute maximum location at which you can go to. So you then take your template off and cut as close to your pencil as possible. And trust me when I say this, the closer, the better. Template bits have a tendency to grab grain that's not going the right direction. And we're gonna talk about that again in a minute. But you really wanna get close to your line. So uh, we're gonna head over to the bandsaw and cut this out. I'm gonna do it with the template on there. If you don't trust yourself, draw a pencil and cut it out with the bandsaw, getting as close to your line as possible. You could also make a secondary backup template just in case. One of the good techniques to use, because when you're template routing, all of the material that's outside your template is gonna be removed, so you don't care what it looks like. One of the ways that I get in inside corners like this, you can tell I'm using a 3 8 inch blade here so it does not make turns very well. And you could stop and put on a smaller blade, but there's an easy way to just nibble at it. You just come in it straight and just keep nibbling away until you, then you can make a straight cut. So like for these areas, which are really tough to get into with a big blade like this, let me show you how I handle those. Okay, so I've drawn arrows on both my router and my router table that show the direction that the bit spins. You always wanna go opposite the bit except for a few exceptions. Now, 
this comes into play, especially on end grain and uh, when you're doing corners. When you use the router, it's gonna flip over and the direction of spin is gonna be different. So it's gonna be exactly opposite what I show you on the router table, but this applies to the router as well. The reason I chose this piece of maple is it has really defined grain and maple is one of the hardest types of wood to route. Now I 99% of the time use this compression bit because I've never had an issue going around corners or with end grain with this bit. Um, and I wanted to show you with this one, because in Jay's Chairs Project, this is a quarter inch curve here, so you have to use this bit for those inside curves there. But you can see here on the grain, the grain is going like this, and you can see that by the lines. And so if you were routing, you have to go against the router bit most of the time, and you would wanna go this way. And because otherwise, if you went the other way, let's say this piece was flipped over and you were going this way, this is gonna catch and you're gonna get tear out, the piece can shoot out of your hand, uh, and it can lead to a dangerous situation at the worst, and at the best, you know, ruin a work piece that you spent a lot of time milling and preparing for your final piece of furniture. So grain direction is important, which is why a bit with two bearings on it is so great, because without taking the bit out of the router and without changing where your piece is, you can ride on the top bearing, or you can flip it over and then ride on the bottom bearing. And so bits with two bearings on it are worth their weight in gold, uh, especially something like this uh, that lasts forever and makes template routing so much easier. So let me show you what happens when grain catches. I am a trained professional, quote unquote, and I expect this to happen. So this, I'm gonna show this to you so that you don't do this at home. So you, you saw that fly straight out of my hands the second I touched it. So how do we overcome that? One, never start trying to cut in the middle of a curve. You always wanna work your way up to it and work your way around. Now, like a curve like this that has an apex on it, you would want to cut this way and stop in the middle at the apex of the curve. And then you would wanna come the other way. So flip the piece over and go the other way to the center of the curve and cut this way. And that may involve changing to a different router bit or switching which bearing you're cutting off of. Um, the other way to stop that is use a compression bit and take off as little material as possible. So this brings us to climb cutting. Climb cutting is where you go the same direction, the router is spinning. This is something you don't use very often, but works great when you need to get around a curve where the grain is just facing the wrong way. And so you would start on your straight spot and just come back a little bit. Now the dangers here is when you go with the spinning router bit, it wants to take the piece. So you need to make sure when you're doing that, you're using push pads and being very careful. It's not a technique that you need to use very often, especially if you have a router bit with two bearings. So let me show you how I would cut this curve. Uh, we're gonna switch over to our compression bit uh, to make it a little bit safer and easier, but uh, I'm gonna show you the different ways that I would attack something like this. Okay, the same thing applies here. As you can see, we're cutting an inside curve here. And so the grain is coming off the board this way and we're gonna wanna shear that grain. So this one, from this area to the end here, we're gonna wanna cut with the template on the bottom and the bottom bearing. And then when we wanna do the other side, we're gonna use the top bearing and go with the grain this way. And that's gonna ensure safety and ensure that we cut with the grain. Now again, with this bit, I could do the whole thing, but uh, in general, if you're not using a bit like this, this is what you wanna do. Okay, let's talk about the workbench versus the router table. Now, this is just as easy to do on a workbench. You just need to work in sections by clamping your board to your workbench, or you could double stick tape it, and then you would run your router the opposite way, again, because the bit is spinning the opposite. I would go on this side downhill. I would then flip the board around and just work in sections. Now, there's something called a safety pin, which is very helpful in routing, and I probably should have installed it for the first demos, but I'm so used to this router table, I kind of get lazy, which is never a good thing. So here, this is a safety pin, and what you do, it's, it's for entering the piece into your work. You, you push your piece against the safety pin, and then you 
push your piece into the work. And this allows you a little bit more control. And if it grabs like you saw in the beginning there, it's gonna have something to rest against and it's gonna not kick back the way it did as hard. Um, you still obviously, the use of a safety pin isn't gonna protect you against that, but it helps you in that. Now, I've come up with a way in the past that I do this on my router. And what I can do, oh, look at that. DeWalt router and DeWalt clamp, I'm so fancy. If this was my workbench, what I would do is you can take your clamp and rest it against the work and use that to bring it into your piece. So I have my clamp in the back here and I've got that rested on my work. So I have a pivot point on my router and then I just bring that in. And when I start cutting, I just rotate the clamp away a little bit so it doesn't affect my cut. Um, but that helps you enter and even exit the workpiece safely. You can rotate your clamp back and then rotate your router off, turn it off, let it spin down, and then remove your non-spinning router. So a quick tip here, because on this channel we don't hide our mistakes, we show them and we show how to fix them. Uh, I was trying to show using the safety pin and when doing a little B-roll, and I had my router bit set too high. What you want to do, the, old, the way to set your router bit is you want the cutting part of the router bit to be only as high as your workpiece. I had it set, you can see here, where the black of the laser cut has gone away. And because MDF is compressive, and I had a very small portion of the bearing on there, we ate away a bunch of our template there. And that would be, that would be a catastrophic error. I don't know if that's one I could fix. So it's a good thing to know. Set your cutting. Don't don't worry that just oh my bearing is on my template. Make sure that your cutting the cutting part of your bit is only on your workpiece. Maybe just like a micro piece of a millimeter above the finished workpiece. Okay, my last little tip is when you go to remove your template, the best thing I found is a putty knife. You don't want to just get one end up here and then try and remove it because this is what's going to happen. You're going to end up breaking your template actually didn't break, it just split where it was supposed to. But I've broken many a template, trust me, when you're using quarter inch MDF. So what I do is I very carefully, I get my putty knife in there and I just get it up just a little bit at a time. Here, I'll do it from your angle so you can see me. And I just start to pry slowly and the pressure of the putty knife will remove it. And there we go, simple as that. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope you found some joy out of this. We're gonna be releasing some router videos coming up, so there'll be lots of great router-based content. Let me know down in the comments if there's any techniques that you're unsure about and you'd like to see me cover. Um, thanks for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, head down to the Cat's Moses store, which is linked below, and get a dovetail jig, a stop block, or a t-shirt. Stay safe in the shop, guys. Yeah.